Hello students, welcome back to Ingenious Academy. Do hit the subscribe button if you are here for the first time. Now we are going to solve this problem which says that if the average normal stress in each of the 20 mm diameter bars is not allowed to exceed 150 megapascal, determine the maximum force speed that can be applied to joint C. So we are required to find this force P in order to have the stress lower than or equal to 150 megapascal in each of these member of this given truss. So first of all what we will do is that we will represent, we will find the forces of these three members in terms of this force P and then we will we look for the member which is having the greatest force, which is carrying the greatest normal force. So for that, first of all, I'm going to consider joint C and I will consider the forces on joint C. Let's say that this BC member is in compression. So if it is in compression, it's going to apply the force on joint C uh, or we can say that it will apply the force on joint C towards joint C if it is compressive force. So this is, we can say this is FBC and let's assume that uh, this AC member is in tension. So if it is in tension, its force must be acting on, act, acting away from joint C. So this is FAC. And let's assume that uh, this FBC is making some angle theta with the vertical. So now we are given that this is 2, this is 1.5, so we can find the length of this BC member by using the Pythagoras theorem. So we can say that by using the Pythagoras theorem, the length of BC will be 2 square plus 1.5 square under the square root. So this gives us 2.5. So this is, we can say that this is 2.5 meters. So we are going to consider joint C for equilibrium, the sum of the forces in the X the sum of the forces in the x must be equals to zero towards the right is our positive x direction so now if we resolve this bc into its component so we will have one component in this direction and we will have one component in this direction so this one this one will be the cos component because the angle is made with the cos component or we can say that the angle is made with the vertical so if the angle is made with the vertical, then this component is the cos component and this one is the sine component. So if we apply the sum of the forces in the x, then P force is in the positive x and the cos component of FBC is in the negative x. So we will write minus FBC. Uh, this one is the cos component and this one is the sine component. So the sine component, we will say that minus FBC sine of theta plus P is equal to zero. And from this we can say that minus FBC sine of theta. Now from this triangle, from this triangle we can find sine of theta. So this is the angle. So this will be the base and this will be the perpendicular. This is the 90 degree. So this is the hypotenuse. For this angle, this is the hypotenuse and this is the perpendicular. So sine of theta is perpendicular divided by hypotenuse. So we can say that sine of theta is perpendicular divided by hypotenuse and this will be equal to minus p multiplying both sides with minus sign we will have plus p so from this equation we can say that fbc is equal to 2.5 divided by 2 multiplied by p so we can say 2.5 divided by 2 is 1.25 so we can say that fbc is 1.25 p and since we got the positive sign so this means that the assumed direction of fbc is accurate this means that FBC is in compression. FBC is, um, is applying the force on joint C in this direction. So is a reaction that joint C will apply the force on FBC in this direction, which will make it compressive. So we can say that this FBC is compressive and it is 1.25 times of that force P. Similarly, if we apply the sum of the forces in the Y that must be equals to zero, upward direction is considered to be positive. Now we have this FAC in the downward direction that is in the negative y so I will write minus FAC and then we have this cos component of FBC so we will say that's that's in the positive y so we will write plus FBC cos of theta this is equal to zero 
from this equation we can say that minus FAC is equal to minus FBC cos of theta and again from for this angle this is the base and this is the perpendicular and this is the hypotenuse so the cos of theta will be the base divided by hypotenuse so we can say that that cos of theta is the base 1.5 divided by 2.5 and similarly we can put this FBC equals to 1.25 times P 1.25 times P and if you multiply both sides of equation with minus sign so we will have the positive sign so we can say that 1.25 multiplied by 1.5 divided by 2.5 this gives us FAC we can say that FAC is equal to 0 0.75 0 0.75 times P similarly to find the force in this AB member what we will do is that we will consider this joint B because at joint B we will have only support in the vertical direction because this is the roller support at A we will have two support reactions so it's better to solve for joint B so for joint B we will have that FBC in the opposite direction because this member all, all these three members are two force members so if <clears throat> if FBC is in compression then it must be applying the force on joint B in this direction as well so we will consider that force FBC here so this is FBC which is equal to 1.25 times P and similarly we have we will have the roller support which is going to be let's say BY and let's assume that this AC member is in tension uh, sorry this AB member is in tension so if it is in tension its force must be acting away from joint B so we will say that this is FAB and let's say that this FBC is making some angle alpha here let's say let's say this angle is alpha so now again we will apply for joint B we will apply the equilibrium conditions joint B we want to find this force FAB so for FAB we must apply the sum of the forces in the X so the sum of the forces in the X the sum of the forces in the X that must be equals to 0 for joint B as well towards the right is our positive X so now as you guys can see that this FBC will have two components it will have it will have one one component in this direction and it will have one component in this direction so this component will be the cost component according to this angle alpha because angle alpha is made with the horizontal so this component is the cost component so we can say that FAB is in the negative X so you will write minus FAB and the cost component of FBC is in the positive X so you will write plus FBC which is 1.25 times P cos of alpha this is equal to 0 and from this for this angle cos of alpha will be this base divided by hypotenuse so this is 2 divided by 2.5 so we can say this is 2 divided by 2.5 and from this we can say that minus FAB 1.25 multiply by 2 divided by 2.5 this gives us 1 so this means that this is equal to one this 1.25 times this is 1 so this means that minus FAB plus P this is equal to 0 and from this we can say that minus FAB is equal to minus P multiplying both sides with minus sign FAB is equal to P <coughs> and since we have assumed that FAB is acting away from this <coughs> from this joint B so this means that that AB member is in tension so this is in tension so we will say and similarly FAC is acting away from joint C so if it's acting away from joint C then this FAC is in tension as well so we will say this is the tensile force as well now the problem statement says that uh, the average normal stress in each of the 20 member uh, 20 mm diameter so the diameter of these three members is the same and the allowable normal stress is the same 150 megapascal so if this is the case then if B, BC member is the critical because it is carrying the maximum maximum normal force so then we can say that BC member is the critical force and that will give us the p value that maximum p value that can be applied at 
joint C in order to have the allowable stress 150 megapascal or less than 150 megapascal in all the three members. So we can say that BC, BC member is critical. So we can say that the allowable stress is equal to FBC divided by the area of that BC. Now the area will be, we can say that the area will be equal to pi divided by 4 d square. So pi divided by 4 and dia is given as 20 mm. So 20 divided by 1000 square, the unit will be, the units will be now in meter square. So we can say pi, pi divided by 4 multiply by 20 divided by 1000 square. So this gives us area equal to um, 0 0.000312 let's say in meter square. And if we shift the decimal place towards the right, the three digits, then we will have area equals to 0 0.3142 into 10 raised to the power minus 3 meter square. So this is the area. Now putting FBC and an allowable stress, we can say that this allowable stress is FBC, which is 1.25 times P divided by that area which is 0 0.3142 into 10 raised to power 3, 10 raised to power minus 3, this is equal to, it, this must not exceed 150 megapascal, so 150, mega is 10 raised to power 6, pascal is newton per meter square. So now from this, from these two equations we can find P. So P is equal to 150 into 10 raised to power 6, Newton per meter square multiply by that area. This area is in meter square. So 0 0.3142 10 raised to the power minus 3 meter square divided by that constant which is multiplied with P. So that is 1.25. So meter square will cancel out here and we will be left with the units of Newton, right? So this is we can say. 150 multiplied by 10 raised to the power 6 multiplied by 0 0.3142 multiplied by 10 raised to the power minus 3 divided by 1.25. So this gives me P equals to 37,704 newtons or we can say that 37.7 kilonewtons approximately. So 37.7 kilonewton. So if that force P is equal to 37.7 kilonewton or less than 37.7 kilonewton, so the stress in all these three members must not exceed this 150 megapascal. So this is the solution of this particular problem. I hope this will help you in your learning. Do subscribe Engineers Academy for the solution of such more problems from Mechanics of Materials by R.C. Hibbler.